If you think liver failure is something that only happens to the old man sitting at the end of the bar at 10 a.m., or that yellow skin and eyes are the only symptoms of a dying liver, then you are operating on a dangerously outdated manual. Liver has no pain receptors inside it. It is the silent general of your body. When it starts to fall, it doesn't scream in pain. It whispers through the color of your nails, itch on your palms at midnight, and smell of your breath. Today, I'm going to walk you through the 11 biological distress signals that 90% of standard checkups miss until it is too late, and the specific science-backed protocol to reverse the damage. We are going to start with your hands. Your hands are essentially a biological readout of your hormonal and metabolic state. I want you to hold them out in front of you right now. Sign one, the famine lines. Look at your fingernails. Do not look at the tips, look at the bed. Do you see horizontal white bands running across the nail, parallel to the base? In the old textbooks, they call these Mirky's lines, but I call them the famine lines. Here is the trick to validate this. If you squeeze your finger, do the lines disappear? If they vanish under pressure and reappear when you let go, that is the sign. It's not the nail itself that is damaged, it's the bed underneath. This is a direct readout of hypoalbuminemia. Your liver is the factory responsible for manufacturing albumin, the most abundant protein in your blood. The blood vessels under your nail bed change their architecture due to this protein deficiency, creating these ghostly white tracks. Sign two. Now look closer. Are the tips of your nails pink, but the rest of the nail bed is eerily white? We used to call these Terry's nails, Normally, you see pink because of healthy microscopic blood vessels delivering oxygen. In liver disease, the tissue changes. It becomes fibrous. It gets boggy. You are literally seeing the blood supply being choked off. A 2018 study published in the Journal of General Internal Medicine found that this specific ghost nail sign was present in nearly 80% of patients with advanced scarring, yet it was missed during standard physical exams. 3. The Crimson Map Flip your hands over. Look at the fleshy part under your thumb and the fleshy part under your pinky. Are they bright red? I'm not talking about pink from clapping. I mean a mottled, deep red color that spares the center of the palm. This is the Crimson Map. This happens because of estrogen dominance. You see, your liver is the garbage disposal for excess hormones. It takes used estrogen and breaks it down. When the liver is clogged with fat, it can't trash the estrogen. Estrogen is a vasodilator. It forces blood vessels to open wide. The capillaries in your palms are blowing open under the pressure of unregulated hormones. If you are a man and you see this, it is a massive red flag that your hormonal ecosystem is upside down. Four, the fibrosis claw. Now place your hand flat on a table, push down, can you flatten your palm completely? Or do your ring finger and pinky finger feel tight? Do they naturally want to curl inward? The textbooks call this Dupuytren's contracture. They often nickname it Viking disease because of a genetic link to Northern Europeans. Here is the mechanism. Your liver regulates inflammation. When it is overwhelmed by toxins, whether that is alcohol, high fructose corn syrup, or seed oils, it triggers a systemic fibrosis response. The same scar tissue that is forming inside your liver is forming inside the fascia of your hand. It is thickening, tightening, and pulling your fingers into a permanent fist. Your hand is literally mirroring the stiffness of your internal organs. Six, the alien tree, caput medusae. Because the blood cannot get through the main pipe, it desperately tries to find a detour. It forces its way into the tiny, fragile veins around your belly button the decorative pipes of the building. These veins swell, twist, and bulge out, creating a snake-like pattern radiating from your navel. The Greeks named it Caput Medusae after the Gorgon Medusa. Seven, the internal time bomb. The same backup happens in your throat. The veins in the lower esophagus balloon outward. These are varices. Think of them like overinflated bicycle tires made of tissue paper. If you eat a sharp tortilla chip or cough too hard, they can burst. This is the most dangerous complication of liver disease. 
it leads to massive internal bleeding. This is why we don't wait for pain. We look for the early signs like the crimson map on the hands, so we never get to the point of the bursting balloon. 8. The Paper Skin Finally, look at your shins and arms. Do you bruise if you just bump into a table? Do the bruises stay for weeks? This is the paper skin. It happens for two reasons. One, the liver is the factory that manufactures clotting factors, the glue that stops bleeding. Sick liver equals no glue. Remember that back pressure? It also backs up into the spleen. The spleen swells up and starts hoarding platelets, the patches for the holes. So you have thin blood, no glue, and no patches. You become a walking bruise. Now, we move from the physical to the neurological. This is where the liver's failure begins to steal your personality. 9. The Zombie Flap Asterixis This is the single most useful physical exam maneuver I perform, and you can do it right now. Extend your arms straight out in front of you. Lock your elbows. Bend your wrists back as if you are stopping traffic. Spread your fingers wide. Close your eyes and hold it for 30 seconds. If your hands start to uncontrollably flap forward and backward like a bird trying to take off, that is a massive red flag. The medical term is asterixis. The mechanism is, your nerves require a constant stream of clean signaling to maintain muscle tone. But if your liver is failing, it cannot filter ammonia. Ammonia is a neurotoxin produced when you digest protein. Normally, the liver turns ammonia into urea and you pee it out. When the liver is clogged, ammonia builds up in the blood and crosses the blood-brain barrier. It literally short-circuits the neurons. The flap is your brain momentarily blacking out its signal to the hand muscles, causing them to drop, then frantically reconnecting, causing them to snap back. 10. The Breath of the Dead, Fetter Hepaticus. This is disturbing, but you need to know it. Have you ever smelled someone's breath and it didn't smell like bad teeth or food? It smelled musty, sweet, like a mixture of rotten eggs and garlic. Doctors call this fetter hepaticus. I call it the breath of the dead. It is caused by dimethyl sulfide. When the liver can't filter sulfur-containing compounds from your diet, they travel to your lungs and you exhale them. A study published in the Journal of Hepatology showed that this scent profile is distinct enough that it indicates advanced metabolic failure. If a partner tells you your breath has a weird, sweet, musty smell, do not buy mouthwash. Go to a doctor. 11. The Estrogen Star Look at your chest and neck. Do you see a tiny red dot with little legs radiating out from it? It looks like a crushed spider. If you press the center, it turns white. Let go, it fills red again. This is the estrogen star. One or two might be normal. If you have three or more, that is a statistically significant correlation with liver pathology. Your body is trying to grow new blood vessels because the chemical signaling is haywire. Coming to the missing link. Sign 12. The Midnight Itch. Nocturnal Pruritus. This is the one that most videos miss. Do you have intense itching, specifically on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet? And here's the key. Is it worse at night? You scratch until you bleed, but there is no rash, no bug bites. This is caused by bile salts. When the liver is blocked, bile cannot flow into the gut. It acts like a backed up sewer system. The bile acids leak back into the bloodstream these salts deposit in the skin and irritate the nerve endings. Why at night? Because of the circadian rhythm of cortisol and body temperature. If you have the midnight itch combined with fatigue, you need to check your liver immediately. So, we have identified the enemy, but here is the redemption. The liver is the only organ in the human body that can regenerate. You can cut away 70% of a liver, and if the environment is right, it will grow back. So how do we trigger the resurrection? We don't do it with detox teas. We do it with biochemistry. You must stop the flow of sludge. This means eliminating high fructose corn syrup. But the real secret weapon is choline. 
Choline is the molecule the liver uses to export fat. It builds the VLDL particles that act like trucks to carry the fat out of the liver. If you don't have enough choline, the fat gets trapped in the liver like guests at a hotel with no exit. A landmark study from the Nash Clinical Research Network showed that in postmenopausal women, choline deficiency was significantly associated with higher fibrosis scores. Your sources for this? Eggs, specifically the yolks, beef liver, and cruciferous vegetables. Don't fear the yolk, it is the antidote. 2. The black nectar, coffee. Your liver loves bitter, and specifically, it loves coffee. A meta-analysis published in PLOS1 involving thousands of participants showed that coffee drinkers have a significantly lower risk of liver fibrosis and cirrhosis. Why? Coffee contains cafestol and kawiol, two compounds that dampen liver inflammation and downregulate the genes that create scar tissue. Drink two to three cups of black coffee a day. It is the cheapest, most effective liver shield we have. Three. The clean cycle, autophagy, time-restricted eating. When you are constantly eating, your liver is in storage mode. You need to flip the switch to burn mode. This only happens when insulin drops. Aim for a 16-hour fasting window. This triggers autophagy, where the liver cells start eating their own damaged components and burning the stored fat for fuel. Now, a critical warning before you run off and buy supplements the acetaminophen trap. If you are fasting or if you have had alcohol, never take acetaminophen. To process this drug, your liver needs a molecule called glutathione. If you are fasting or drinking, your glutathione is depleted. Taking Tylenol in this state creates a toxic metabolite called NAPQI that destroys liver cells instantly. It is the number one cause of acute liver failure in the Western world. If you found value in this discovery process, I want you to watch this next video where I break down exactly what your blood type reveals about your disease risk. It connects directly to what we just discussed. Watch this next, and I'll see you on the inside.